welcome to southwestern idaho and another edition of random road cuts the video series where we find a random road cut explore it systematically make observations discover some new geology learn some things hopefully make some interpretations that are valid and possible and just learn together so thanks again for joining me i'm geology professor sean wilsey out here on idaho highway 78 we're right where the highway crosses sinker creek which is one of the uh, major or i suppose not major but one of the drainages that drains the Owyhee mountains of southwestern idaho you can see the snow-capped Owyhee mountains out here in the distance and so we've got a nice little road cut here right along this highway so let's go head over here in a second and take a look at it of course as we always like to do on these episodes of random road cuts it's good to just start with a little bit of the regional context if you know a bit about the area going in um, it kind of generally will hopefully get you to a better place in beginning your observations versus just going in completely cold not knowing anything so we are in the western snake river plain of idaho and so the western snake river plain has several dominant rock types among them are basaltic lava flows there's uh, rhyolites that were erupted from the yellowstone hotspot there are lake deposits and other sedimentary units associated with lake idaho that existed here from about 10 to 3 million years ago so those are some things that are possible and of course you want to be ready for just about anything um, so as we look at this road cut overall in detail we can see it's very dark in color there's also obviously some degree of layering within the road cut as well and so let's go ahead and head over there wait for a break in the traffic and what we'll do maybe is start on the left side and work our way to the right the layers are overall horizontal but because the road's a little bit uh, sloped here we'll be able to mostly move up section as we look at these sorts of things so always good to make sure things are clear heading across the road and the road rock is dominantly this kind of brown to gray material um, in places it looks like there's this white coating but it looks like that's maybe a weathering process that's deposited on this fracture surface on this this blank face here on the rock um, as we look at this closely even in the sunlight I can see some crystals in here some shiny little crystals I can also see a lot of holes this rock has a fair number of pores or voids in it and with the small crystals we're seeing here and the holes in in the rock that makes this rock a good candidate for being a volcanic rock based on the dark color and some of the crystals we might find here this is most likely a basalt so these would be low viscosity runny lava flows that piled and stacked up on top of each other similar to what you'd see in iceland or hawaii now when lava flows like this are fresh they tend to be black um, sometimes almost even a little bit silvery and iridescent when they're nice and fresh these don't do not look that way these look a little bit more grungy and more weathered so it's quite likely that these are either a little bit older or they've seen a little bit of a different history in terms of what's happened to them after they were molten and flowed we can see in here in places that there's some layering to the lava flows and that may indicate uh, the the very runny nature that when these were in place is very thin sheets of lava um, and subsequently stacked on each other like pohoihoi lava is very fluid types of lava flows that may be an indicator there because you can see this layering that exists right here in front of me uh, persists as we move our way down the outcrop so it seems to be quite prevalent in other sections of the rock looking above us there uh, the flows tend to look a little bit thicker whoops and a little bit more massive sorry i almost dropped the little camera there so let's check this out in a little bit of detail the other interesting thing we see here um, all this white material and if you notice a lot of the white 
is actually filling in the voids, filling in these holes in the rock. Now knowing these are volcanic rocks and the, the lava flows contain a lot of gases, dissolved gases when they erupt, these holes then would be called vesicles. Um, and in places where we get some of these vesicles filled in with mineral material, uh, this is what we would call an amygdule. So an amygdule is a vesicle, a gas bubble, that's had minerals uh, precipitated and deposited within it. So it's lined or completely filled in with mineral material. And down here on the ground, I'm sure we'll see some here in a bit, but here's uh, a pretty nice example right here. So you can see this large one just above my thumb where the vesicles, these gas bubbles, have been filled in with mineral material. What that tells us is that if the vesicle's been filled in by mineral material, that would have to take place in an environment where these rocks were buried and groundwater passed through them. And so the amygdules and just the characteristic, the color, the texture of these rock suggest that they've been altered by fluids, water, passing through these rocks and precipitating out minerals that were carried in solution by that fluid, most likely groundwater. So these might be what we call, uh, if that water was hot, if this was a hot water environment, hot groundwater, we could call this hydrothermal alteration. So hydro water, thermal heat. Uh, so that's very likely to be the case. You'll sometimes see this result in different colors in the rock, um, maybe some new different mineralogy that you that you wouldn't see in the original rock itself. And so another little zone in here of these white shiny amygdules. I think we'll see some better ones as we move our way across. I've seen a few down here on the road. Um, it looks like there's some just above us here as well, but let's work our way up. So pretty interesting story here. You can see some of these just absolutely just gorgeously shining in the light. Um, I can't tell just looking at them what kind of minerals they are in terms of uh, what mineral that is. I did test it with the acid. It's not calcite. A lot of times it's a group of minerals called zeolites that are the types of material that gets precipitated. So right here, it looks like we have a good zone where the amygdules are quite a bit bigger. So all this white that you see in the basalt are actually vesicles that have been partially filled in with this material. So um, pretty interesting. Um, and not something that's super common in the Snake River Plain. You usually though have to get into the older uh, basalts. Usually the younger ones don't, you don't see this in the younger ones because they haven't been buried uh, by the lava or by, they haven't been buried and then had water pass through them. But in the older basalts that are maybe a few millions of years up to maybe eight or so, 10 million years old, uh, you can sometimes see those in places. Not sure how old this specific flow is and not sure also what the source of this is. Likely some sort of shield volcano or something nearby. Um, more of the amygdules here. So again, some of the vesicles are still empty. Uh, some are partially filled in and just lined around the rim with this white mineral material. And then others like this one are completely filled in with those mineral materials. But again, the, the fancy term here is amygdules. Let's see what else we can find. Some of the rock has this interesting rounded weathering to it. You do see that sometimes in more massive basalts, this sort of spheroidal weathering. Notice this part of the rock here is a lot less um, vesicular, a lot less of the gas bubbles and a little bit more massive than some of the more layered rock we saw back at the start of the outcrop there. The other interesting thing is you can see some of these fractures um, where there's some discoloration. Notice that right along this crack in the rock, there's some discoloration, again, suggesting that waters have infiltrated this unit and maybe stained or removed or deposited in some cases 
but just altered the rock along these pathways, the places where the rock is more permeable and where the water can get through it a little bit easier. Looks like there's a zone, we'll go down a little bit further. I think this zone, more or less at head level, um, has a lot more of these vesicles. Let's see if we can get to it right over here. Yeah, you can see all the white here in this section. And so, yeah, just these exceptionally, you can see actually the crystal bases on some of these. You can see the crystallinity of some of these amygdules, these vesicles filled in with mineral material here. And so it looks like in this more uh, vesicular, gas bubble rich zone is where we get a lot of the vesicles and then as we work our way down, they're a lot less common down in this more massive unit. Here's a nice big one here that's uh, almost golf ball size. A couple more over here. Another little section of them right here. Um, all right, let's move up a little bit further. Different colors, of course, you know, oxidation in the rock can change the color. Uh, the iron, these basalts are high in iron, and so they'll tend to oxidize quite a bit. Here's another little section where there's some fractures and some material has been precipitated as groundwater has moved through these fractures and deposited uh, some mineral material in there as well. So these, these basalts are a little bit crumbly, not as resistant as you might see in other places, and show a lot of signs of having been changed to some degree by water moving through it. Another big fracture running down through it here. Oh, this one's interesting. This actually has, if you look right here, there's small little chunks, little clasts in it. It's kind of crumbly in here, but this white material it's almost like a clastic dike, like maybe fluid moved through this fracture and had little pieces of broken up rock that it was transporting as well as it was fluidized. Again, just a possible interpretation, but that's sort of what I'm seeing right there. And you can see there's um, differences too in, in the rock too. It's a little bit more crumbly and easily weathered. You can just kind of rake this thing with your hand. If you know anything about basalts, they they just typically don't behave this way. So this is the alteration of the rock due to these wa the water, the groundwater, and most likely uh, hot or mineralized groundwater passing through it. Some other interesting things here. This is super fragile, this little flaky thing here. Yeah, but again, another fracture plane that runs up through the rock here. Yeah, these rocks, I think you've just seen a lot of uh, fluids pass through them over time. And so we're seeing quite a bit of alteration due to that. So kind of neat. Um, something you don't see as much of in different parts of the Snake River Plain. I guess it depends on where you are is this much alteration in the basalts. Um, so even though we only saw one rock type here, we saw some differences in um, characteristics in terms of texture and color. We saw the role that fluids play in altering the rock, precipitating minerals into whatever voids or pore spaces there are, whether they're fractures or these gas bubbles, what we call vesicles. Um, just interesting little outcrop here along Highway 78 in southwestern Idaho. Thanks again for joining me on this episode. Hope you've enjoyed exploring this outcrop with me. Uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, there's a thanks button below the viewer there on the screen. And then under the video description, there's also a few links as well to help me continue to make these geology education videos. But we'll see you next time from another road cut, signing off here from Highway 78 in southwestern Idaho.